hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you stand and give God the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us in this place on this morning. Thank you, Lord, and we just lift our hands and give you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. We have so much to be grateful and thankful for. So can you just give God the highest praise, which is hallelujah. I love that word, hallelujah. Welcome to Restoration Free Gospel Church of Christ, which is located in Lexington Park, Maryland, under the leadership of Bishop John Briscoe and First Lady Mary Ann Briscoe. We bring you greetings in the name of Jesus. We thank and praise God for Elder Russell Slade in his absence and his beautiful wife, Minister Latasha Slade. To all of the ministerial staff, we greet you. To everyone that is in the house, we greet you. And those that are watching via social media, we greet you in the awesome and the mighty name of Jesus. The scripture for this morning will be coming from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, on this last day of the seventh month, which is the month of completion, God, we come before you, God, humble. We come before you, God, with our hands stretched wide, surrendering to you. God, we ask that you remove anything that is not of you on today, God. This is the month of completion, God. And before we go into the eighth month, which is the month of new beginnings, God, we want you to complete anything that needs to be done in our lives, God. We repent right now in the name of Jesus, God. Anything that is not of you, God, we give it to you, God. First, we must learn how to forgive ourselves before we can forgive others. And God, we just ask for forgiveness. And God, we pray for the sick and the shut in on this morning, God. We know that you can heal, God. And we just thank you for total healing in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for healing those and bringing them back into the service. And we pray for Minister Jackie on this morning, God. When the doctor said, no, you gave another report. Because whose report shall we believe? We shall re believe the report of the Lord, God. And we thank you for her life. Because there is work for her to do in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord, for those that are in bereavement. We thank you, Lord, that you can comfort them, that you can heal them. Those that have lost loved ones, God, we ask that you continue to keep your loving arms around them in the name of Jesus, God. And God, we ask that you come into this service this morning, God. Let your anointing flow like never before, God. We pray right now over JWM in the name of Jesus, God. Let them bring forth songs that honor you in unity in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you and we call it done. So right now I want to welcome Judah Worship Ministries and the next voice that you will hear will be that of Minister Elizabeth Bowman and she will bring forth a mighty word on this morning. Thank you. showing up God hallelujah in this house today oh Lord we seek your presence now for in this house today 
Oh, Lord, we know you will somehow heal the broken hearted and you'll set the captive free. Speak a word of life to us that will shape our destiny. So whatever you desire to do in this house today, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, 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 have your way in this house, in this house today. Oh Lord, we seek your presence now. Or in this house, or in this house today. Oh Lord. Have your way, 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 have your way
brick and mortar, Father God. This house, Lord Jesus. This house, this body, this house, Father God. Have your way, 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 God. So whatever you desire to do in this house today, Lord, have your way. Worship the Lord, 
Let's give him the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Give our God the honor. Give our God the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship the Lord, let's give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Oh, come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Yes, come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Come. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Oh, come, come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give Him the honor, give Him the praise. Worship the Lord, let's give him the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Give our God the honor. Give our God the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship the Lord, let's give him the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Give my God the honor. Give my God the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Oh, come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Yes, come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come on, come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the Praise. 
Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. We were called to worship. That's our purpose on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome you to this service this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad. This is the last Sunday of the month of July. God has been faithful. I don't know about you, but he has been faithful to me and my family. And I know he's been faithful to you too. Hallelujah. We thank God for everyone who is here this morning and those who are watching on the line. God is good and his mercy is endureth forever. I want to thank God for our bishop for every now and then he gives us an opportunity to minister. I thank God for his life and thank God for the wife. I pray that God will heal you completely in the name of Jesus. Thank God for their leadership. I want to thank God for in the absence of our elder. I want to thank God I think he's ministering somewhere. May the glory of the Lord overshadow him wherever he is. In the name of Jesus. 
And for everyone who is here this morning, I thank God that God has given us another opportunity to hear his word. The entrance of the word of God gives life and understanding. So God has given us an opportunity to be in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our precious Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We lift too high above every other God. You are the God of all flesh, the one who sits on the throne, the one who has made the heavens his abode and the earth his footstool. Father, I want to thank you for giving us one more day to make it right with you. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, every day we wake up, oh God, there is something new on the face of this earth. If it is not flood, it is fire. If it is not earthquake, it's something else. But Lord, we want to thank you, oh God, because it's pointing us to the fact that your coming is soon. And Lord, we want us to be prepared because you will come like a thief in the night, according to the word of God. And I pray that we will not be taken on our ways in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We ask, oh God, that you be in this service this morning. Father, I use my mouth of clay to speak your word. Let me decrease while you increase. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My topic says uh, it's a choice. Everything in life is a choice. And uh, my text is taken from Joshua 24. Joshua 24, 14 and 15. And it reads, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve him, to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether, whether the, the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I pray that that will be your prayer this morning. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. The series for the month has been the blessings of obedience. And um, my topic says, it's a choice. We all are responsible for choices we make, and we must be willing to accept our, the outcome of choices, whether good or bad. Where you are today is as a result of the choices you made yesterday, and where you will be tomorrow will be premised on the choices you make today. Everything in life rises and falls on the choices and decisions we make daily. Therefore, there is need to choose wisely with discernment. Hallelujah. I had to choose uh, Joshua, um, this uh, Joshua 24, 14 to 15, because when you are called into the ministry where God saves you, sometimes he doesn't tell you why you are coming into the ministry. You just come in as, you're as faithful as you are. He begins to reveal what he wants you to be or what you want him to, what he wants you to do in the ministry. So Joshua was one of them. He was a faithful minister of Moses. He followed Moses wherever he went. Whatever Moses did, he was there with him. So after the death of Moses, all Israel was left in his hands, in the hands of Joshua. Nobody knew that he was going to be the next person to take over from Moses. But he was just faithful. For God saw his faithfulness. And even if somebody can stop the sun from rising because he was doing a job, 
he was fighting the Amalekites. Then God knew that this is something, this is somebody I can trust with, the, with my people. So after the death of Moses, all Israel was left in the hands of Joshua, Moses' minister. The greatest war hero who led many battles to get the Israelites where they are. Hallelujah. At the time of this verse, Joshua was an old man of 110 years, now ready to pass on his heavenly rest and, uh, and receive his reward. But Joshua looked at something. He was so worried because of the people. He has led them for so many years. And because he was old, you know, all parents begin to observe their children, how they behave. So Joshua, uh, let me read something. Joshua took from the eastern side of Jericho, of the J uh, Jordan River, conquered Jericho and Ai, and throughout all the Canaan, they all, throughout all Canaan, they had seven years of war and 23 years of settling into the land God gave them. Walls of Jericho uh, falling, altars of God were built. Sun stood still in the valley of Ajalon when Moses was, I mean, when Joshua was uh, fighting. He had to tell God to hold the, the sun or the moon. Hallelujah. And God obeyed him. Hallelujah. That is a, a human being. But because he was faithful, God had to help him. Cities were constructed and civil wars were fought and won. Because they, they were now at peace after all these wars, Joshua could see uh, changes in the, in, the, in the people's attitude and behaviors towards the worship of God. So uh, um, Joshua observed and saw that now I'm old and I'm getting to check out from this place. These people are not behaving the way they were supposed to. They started to form themselves gods to worship rather than the Lord God. When they were at war, they held to their God family. But now that they are at ease, they turned to idol worship. They had quickly forgotten what God had done for them in Egypt, in the wilderness, and the land where they occupy. Is it not like us? When we are looking for something, oh, we hold God. God, if you don't do this, oh, God, I will serve you. After God does it, you find somewhere and relax. It's everywhere. It's, it's human beings. I would say we are descendants of <laughs> the Israelites. <laughs> Amen. Joshua then gathered all the tribes of Israel in Shechem and called for the elders of Israel for their heads, their judges, and their officers. Joshua was not necessarily giving them a choice, but instead reminding them exactly what God had done and what he would do if they turned their back on him. He declared unto them that as for him and his house, they will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. The scripture we read, it started by saying, now therefore fear the Lord. In the Bible, we see and read many scriptures that tell us to fear the Lord. And I chose a few. Number one, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The Lord has not, uh, the Lord has not answered. The Lord has all the answers to life. He is not only the beginning, but the source of all knowledge. And the only one who understands all mysteries. The Bible does not permit us to call anyone a fool. But if you don't fear God, you despise wisdom and understanding, you make yourself a fool. Hallelujah. Number two, Proverbs 3, 7. 
Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Turn away from evil is the idea behind a change of direction or attitude. You have to change your attitude and your direction where you are going if you know it is not right. Hallelujah. Number three, Psalms 2 verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. We have to reverence God. Hallelujah. In all your life, you have to reverence God. Psalms 22, verse 23, that's the next one. It says, you who fear the Lord, praise him. You who fear the Lord, praise him. Hallelujah. The reason we live is to praise and worship him. God loves to fellowship with man, but we are so busy doing our own thing. Hallelujah. Generations have come and gone, and we, are still, we still read and hear the same teaching, fear the Lord and worship him. How many of us will agree with me that the world has lost that fear many times over? We don't fear God any longer. Even in the house of God, we don't fear God. There are things that we are supposed to do, many of us, just seems as if, oh, that part of the Bible should be taken out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is up to us, the followers of Jesus Christ, to bring back the fear to, to the people of the world by reminding everyone, including ourselves, that God is still the creator of, of everything. And he has provided us with internal life if we choose to take it. It's a choice. Internal life is a choice. Hell is a choice. You have to make your mind up. Which one do you want? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why should we fear God? Because he is a giver of life. He has a power to kill and to keep alive. Everything is he made ceases to exist without his being in him. And it, everything he has made, if there's no life in you, in, in, in you, you cannot, if the, the breath in you is taken, there's nothing you can do. They call you a corpse, right? The, blue, the, the Bible says, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 28. God is loving and just in all his ways. He wants us to live for him and bring him glory. Hallelujah. Jesus made Joshua's statement clearer when he said in Matthew 6, 24, No man can serve two masters. For either he, sell, he, will take, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The mammon there is money. God does not say you shouldn't work for money. But you don't allow the money to overshadow you. You should not take preeminence of God in your life. Hallelujah. We all need money to do ministry, take care of your family. But if that's what you are pursuing and forgetting God, you forget that he's the one who has given you life to be running around. So we need to go back and think if that's all we are doing, running after money. You have to think about it. Hallelujah. God cannot share his glory with anyone. Today, you and I can make a choice whom to serve and love. Obedience to the word, to God's instruction, leads to abundant life, while disobedience leads to death. Hallelujah. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Hallelujah. There are things that we do, we say, oh, we don't even ask God. But at the end of the day, you find out that you are in trouble. Hallelujah. Which 
one do you prefer? It's a choice. Life or death. You have physical death where there will be no time to repent in the grave. Spiritual death, you can re revive provided you repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's a choice. God has not changed. He is still a jealous God, and he will not share his glory with anyone. His grace does not cover sinners. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible says, God forbid. Romans 6, 1. What do we do to put our focus back to God? What do we do? Number one, spend less time solving the, the internet and spend more time memorizing God's word. Number two, spend less time in front of the television and more time in prayers. You may be praying for somebody who is in an accident and you just stay in your home and be speaking in tongues. The, that tongues goes a long way because you don't know what you are, you are, you are, you are talking about. The Holy Spirit descends the, the what you are saying and helps somebody somewhere. Most of the time we sit in the, on the television. Some of us stay late in the night watching a program. Nobody says you don't, you don't watch your pro, your, 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 a program in the, on the TV, but there should be time that you take to, 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 to see God's face for yourself and your family, for your children. Some of us say, oh, my children are grown. I don't have anything to do with it. You do. Because if they fall into trouble, the first person they are going to knock is your door. The police will come on your door and knock. Then you will, you will say, what's going on? Or your son has just been involved in an accident or he has killed somebody. Then you will sit up. We don't want that. Hallelujah. So we need to pray. We need to learn how to pray. If you don't pray, you, the Bible says, I mean, I mean it say, the word, there's a word that says that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. We need to pray. Hallelujah. Number three, spend less time eating and spend more time fasting. Many of us don't fast. We don't fast. We look at it as you are punishing yourself. Yes, you can. You are, you, are, you, are, you are punishing your body so that your spirit man can come alive. Many of us don't fast. You just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Just eat. You need to learn to take some time off. Maybe a day in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a week or two days in a week and fast. It helps you to grow spiritually. It helps you to, to, to navigate your life here on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, spend less time talking on the phone and more time reading and studying the word of God. Oh, we all have phones not right now. We all, every child, even a little child has phone. We just sit on the phone continuously and just be talking. Sometimes we just talk nonsense. So we just need to take time and sometimes just shut down. Like when I wake up in the morning, I don't open, I don't take up my phone. Sometimes when they are sending out all these uh, messages, I, I just open it when I want to. Then I begin to see, oh, there is a prayer for this, there is prayer for this. Then I begin to respond. I don't just wake up from the bed. The first thing I take is my phone. No. No. You, you should make it a habit. Seek God's face first when you get up in the morning. Because he has given you life. That's what you should be able to do every morning. When you wake up, you just tell him, oh, thank you, Father, for this is the day you have made. That I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for, the, for giving you life. Many went to bed and didn't wake up. So if you wake up in the morning, the first thing is not the phone. The first thing, I know people, some of us work, our, our jobs require us using our phones. But 
the first thing you have to do is first of all seek God's face before you touch your phone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always remember what God uh, did for you when you chose to follow him. Hallelujah. Throughout the Bible, men, uh, men of God have preached about making a choice to serve God. Moses, before his death, told the people, his people, the Israelites, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your offsprings may live. He gave them a choice. And on top of that, he gave them what to choose. We all have uh, choices to make. And whatever choices we make has consequences, whether good or bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua, in uh, Joshua 24, 27, used a stone as a witness between the Israelites and God. When he was about to depart, he had nothing to put them between them. So he had to use a stone. So this stone will be a witness between you and God that you have chosen to serve him. But did they choose God? Immediately Moses, uh, Joshua died. They went wild. Hallelujah. That's why you have ju uh, judges where they said uh, some of the, the, the elders who were with Moses, I mean with Joshua, after they had died, others who took over, they, they, they just let loose. So in, Josh, in Judges, you hear that the, the statement that people did what was pleasing to them. They never followed God's instructions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maraboshanda. Rabababababababa. Marabashanda. Moses and Joshua were concerned about the decision the people would make because it is one of life and death. It is you are, you are being a, a child of God. It's a good thing. But are you following the word of God? Are you in the word? Or are you just coming because you want to come? You must make up your mind. God is not playing. We may be playing with ourselves here on earth, but there is a day coming when you will stand before God and give an account of yourself. Hallelujah. Not only has Moses and Joshua told us to choose life. But Elijah, as well, in 1 Kings chapter 18, 21, and Elijah came near to the people and said, how long will you go limping between two opinions? If, if, Lord, is, if Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. Hallelujah. There are people in the Bible who were concerned about people making good choices. And uh, God is also concerned about us. That is why we are hearing this message this morning. I don't know what your choice is. Hallelujah. Many thousand years have gone by and some the questions of facing, the, the same question is facing us. Hallelujah. Why are you still limping between two opinions? Many of us are one foot out, one foot in. What's your choice? Coming to church is important. It's very, very important. But having a relationship with God is the most important thing. You are coming to church is a, is a platform where you can learn, you can get uh, 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 tutored by a man of God. But you have to have time for yourself that you will read the word and be able to make a decision for yourself. It's not only the word that we, the bishop or someone speaks on this altar. You have to go back and search it for yourself if it is true. Hallelujah. Because there are so many false prophets out there. People are running for miracles here and there. They want to, they want to belong. But they don't know that they are falling into traps. Hallelujah. While the opportunity is still available, choose to love and serve God. You still have life. You still have an opportunity. You are hearing the word. 
And God is expecting you to make a choice. Even this morning, somebody offends you, you go out, you come in, you go out, you come in. You need to make your mind. Nobody make up your mind and say that no one is going to send me to hell. Nobody, nobody will send me to hell. If you go to hell, then it is your choice. It's your choice. The word of God is there. Everything has been given to you on a platform. Jesus died on the cross to save mankind. His blood was not shed for in vain. It was shed for you to make use of it. So if you go to hell, it's your choice. Hallelujah. While the opportunity is still available, choose to love and serve God. And the only way to be part of God's kingdom and join heirs with Christ is by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life if you have not done so. Going to church, identifying yourself with a, a, a particular church or denomination does not make you a Christian. That's the beginning of your journey. If you stay there and listen to the word, study the word, be a part of the, 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 the flock, God will one day open your eyes to where your, your ministry is. You cannot go, to, when we live here, like uh, Moses or Joshua or all the men of God, they go back home and God sees what they did. They are going back to get their reward. Every one of us is going back to get our reward. What you did here on the face of this earth, what you did with the talent he gave to you, what you did with the money he gave to you, what he did, you did with the time he gave to you. God has given us all these things because you are going to give an account. Even your husband is going to give an account of you and you are going to give an account of your wife too. You are going to give an account of everything. The children the Lord has given to you, if you have allowed them to go astray, you will give an account. So God is not playing. And he has given us the word to be able to read and understand. You can't say, oh, I didn't, I didn't, hear, I didn't hear that before. I have not heard that before. No. The Bible is there for you to read. Before, it was the Old Testament that uh, the priests were in control. Whatever they said went. Uh, whatever they said, the people obeyed. But today, the Bible, some people say, oh, we are under grace. Okay, you're under grace. Grace does not mean you should just do anything you like. Grace does not warrant you doing what you like. God is a merciful God, but the Bible says at the same time he's a consuming fire. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus says in Romans, I mean Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. And we sup with him and he with me. This verse is not only for unbelievers. It's talking mostly to us who are in the church. You are not consistent. If you are not consistent, you need to, to, to read this verse again. He's standing at your door and knock. Many of us are living double lives. You are in the church. But when During the week, you are something else. So we need to sit down, read this verse, and ask God to minister to you. It's not only talking of those who have not received Christ. It's talking to us who are in the church. Behold, I stand at the door. What door? The door of your heart. That's where the problem comes from, your heart. That's where the problem comes from. That's the engine house. That's where the good and the bad comes from. That's why the Bible says that the heart is uh, uh, deceitful and desperately wicked. As we are all sitting here, if they take your, the words, your thoughts and put here, everybody you will say, ah, is this what this person is thinking? But God has made it in, some, in such a way that you have your thoughts with you. It's only God who knows what you are thinking. Hallelujah. 
And until you tell somebody what you are thinking, the person may not know. You may be eating with somebody on the table, and the person is planning to poison you. You may not know. But God knows what everybody is thinking. That's why we have to be careful about our thoughts. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Galatians 3.13. Jesus Christ did not hang on that tree for nothing. He hung on that tree because he wants to redeem you and me from destruction. If a, a, a sin was something that he liked, he wouldn't have driven uh, Adam and Eve from the, the garden. He wouldn't have driven them. He would have just patted them on the back and said, well done. But because he knew that it was a serious crime, he had to send them out. But before he sent them out, he made a provision. He had to kill a, 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 a lamb, took the, 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 the skin, and made them a garment. That is why the blood is still speaking. In the Old Testament, the, that lamb, killing of a lamb, spoke for the, uh, the, the Israelites. Anywhere a lamb is killed, God will, will, will pay attention. Remember when Solomon gave thanks to God, a thousand uh, 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 offering. God paid attention. And because he paid attention, he came down and asked him, what do you want? So God pays attention to his blood, what you do with his blood. If you just discard it and say, it doesn't matter. There's coming a time when the decision you made will stand before you. Hallelujah. If you desire the blessings of Calvary in your life today, come to Jesus and truly surrender your life to him. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not a force, it's a choice. It's a choice. I'm telling you, it's a choice for everything we do. Everything we do is a choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His blessings will indeed prosper you without adding any form of sorrow. Hallelujah. God loves us so much that he decided to send his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. We are looking at that scripture. That, that is a simple scripture. But how many people are abiding with it? He said, God so loved the world that he gave. Before you say something, somebody has completed it. That are you the so ever, whosoever? Are you the so whosoever? He said, whosoever. Are you one of them? Or you are just... In the bank, remember when Jesus was always going about healing people, the crowd was following him. So much crowd. But out of that crowd, one person will, will be, be identified. Like when he was passing through Jericho, the blind man, the blind Bartimaeus, was shouting at the top of his voice, Jesus of Nazareth, Help me. Thou son of David, help me. People were shutting him down because they had no reason following him. Are we just following? Or are we making decisions that will benefit our life in the future? Whatever decision you make now is going to wait for you ahead. The results will not immediately show up. It will show up ahead of you. And by that time, you may not know is whether the decision you made. People were following him. Even the woman with the issue of blood, people were crowding him. She came at the back and touched the hem of his garment. And he, and he turned and said, who touched me? And I, I believe it's Peter who said, uh -uh, what do you mean? Look at the whole crowd. And you're asking who touched me? He said, no, virtue has gone out of me. He knew that somebody who needed something so badly had touched him. And he turned around, and the woman was trembling. Because in those days, if 
if you are unclean and you touch a prophet, you make that prophet unclean. So she was trembling. Then when Jesus looked at her, she started confessing. She said, my daughter, you, 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 are, you, are, you have been made whole. Hallelujah. Are we just following? Are you following the crowd? Because there is some a, a, a musical a concert going there. You just go. Did you ask God? Some people have gone to such places and they are killed. You don't just hear of a program. You just wake up and be going. You have to sit down and internalize it. And what profit am I getting from this thing? As Christians, we don't just walk blindly. Let us sit down every time we have a program or something to do and ask God to help us. Because there are many people out there who are deceivers. They are. They, they, they have a big sign of uh, a church, very big sign. I'll tell you a story. Last month, I had a, 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 there was a colleague I worked with in the bank. She is a Christian. So she called me from Jacksonville. She's still working in, in the place where I retired. She called me and said, um, Ms. Elizabeth, can you be a mentor for me? I said, a mentor, what, what are you doing? She said, yeah, she's doing a course in the church. So I was excited. I thought it's something that um, is going to bring her maybe a position in the church or uh, whatever, either a minister or an elder or because she has been in the church for long. So I said, okay. But you know I'm not in Jacksonville, right? She, says, she said, yes. I said, okay. I thought it's something that will be lifting her in prayers. And when she has any question, she will call me. So she went and gave the people who were doing the program um, my name. The woman called me and said she was going to send me some information. I said, okay. So the, I, I told them to send it to my husband's uh, uh, email address because he can print it from the office. I don't have a printer at home. I have, but it's not connected. So that morning when he left, I had a dream. And in that dream, there was an apartment and there was a big hole in that apartment. When I looked inside, it was so deep and dark, you couldn't see anything. So when I woke up, I said, what type of dream is this? I just, I prayed about it. So my husband came with the, the, the papers. So I started going through it. And uh, they said, as a mentor, you have to be in the church with her on the 7th of, of August. And uh, you will be the one to put a ring on her finger on her graduation. And uh, it is on the altar that they will give you further instructions. I was like, uh -uh. I've never heard where somebody is taking a course. Instead of giving you a certificate, they are giving you a ring. Or instead of a, a, a moderator to put, give you your certificate, they are asking for, uh, asking for um, a mentor to do that. So I called her. I said, what course are you taking? She said, on the paper it said, en route to destiny. En route to destiny. I said, what is this course about? She said, oh, it's just telling you how your destiny and uh, she started talking so many things. I said, hold on. The Bible has already given us everything that pertains to your destiny. So there is no one who will make just one program, just one a topic for you to take that topic and and I've never heard where, uh, even if you go to college, you graduate. 
is a person that who gives you your, your certificate and greets you and said, well done. But this one, they are asking us to come to the pulpit or wherever they are going to do the ceremony. And the, the mentor will be the one to put the ring on the finger of the person you are mentoring. I said, I've never heard that before. I said, let me tell you, you are being initiated into an occult. I said, that is an initiation. I said, you better back out of it. And I, I, I don't know how many people were in the class, but I said, everyone that they are making a mentor is already involved. Because if they give you a ring, I said, are, are, are we getting married? It's only, on, uh, it's only when people get married, I see they put rings. So if you are using a ring to put on your finger, then the person you are making a mentor is already initiated. She said, oh, she didn't know that. I said, I said ha, is your husband aware? He said, oh, the husband is, uh, um, is, uh, is under them. He has a church. I didn't know that they, all, they, yeah, they have a church. I said, go and ask your husband because he knows more than you do on this issue. I said, but let me tell you, if you continue with this thing, you are on the wrong path. I said, these people are out. They have all these big names. They say, what is the Deliverance Temple International? That's the name of the church. I said, go and meet your husband. Say, she doesn't know whether her husband. I said, uh -uh. you cannot tell me your husband does not know. If your husband allowed you to take the course, then he knows something about it. So go and meet him and get back to me. As I'm talking, she did not get back to me. So we have to be careful. There are so many false prophets out there. There are many uh, 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 churches with big, big names. But what they did do behind, they don't tell you. Even you yourself, if you go to these people who are palm readers, you are putting yourself into trouble because you have already registered your name. Your money at the end of the month, part of it is paid, tax is paid to them. And anytime they need you, they just take you up. If they don't do random uh, 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 picking, they just put your name. So we have to be careful. The things we, the, like the Bible says, we cannot uh, 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 share your glory with no man. You cannot serve God and serve mammon. So we have to be careful where we go. You have to be prayerful. That's the only way you can get anything from the Lord. That's the only way. If you go to the world, you are in trouble. Because the devil has the right to deal with you. Hallelujah. Do you just say nothing? I've just spoken some things here. Do you just say nothing? Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, they will serve the Lord. That is my confession. That is my confession. What is yours? What is your confession? So you have to consider it. Hallelujah. As I sing this song, I want you to make up your mind. Make up your mind. What you want to do with the gift that God has given you. With the talents that God has given you. With the finances God has given you. You have to make up your mind. It's a choice. It's a choice. My lifetime. I will give God my lifetime. My lifetime. I will give God my lifetime. If I give God my lifetime, he will take care of me. He will never, never let me down. I will give God my lifetime. My lifetime. I will give God my lifetime. 
to make up your mind. I'm speaking not because I am, I am all that. I'm speaking not because I am perfect. I have something to work. I have things in my life that I have to work on. We all have something in our lives to work on. We are not perfect, but we are work in progress. And you can only be work in progress if you read the word, if you study the word, if you are prayerful. God will open your ears to hear what he wants you to do, what he went, wants you to, where he wants you to go. Hallelujah. If anyone has made up his or her mind this morning, if you have backslidden and you want to uh, rededicate your life, the door is open. The Lord is standing at the door, knocking at your heart. It's your choice. Everybody has a life to live. It's your choice. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning. I thank you because you didn't just pick, out, pick us out of the crowd. You picked us out for a purpose. And every one of us has something in, 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 his or, in him or her to offer you. Father, this hour, O oh God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, because you have given us choices. You are not a God who forces yourself on us. You give us the time and timetable to make it right with you. Father, this morning, your word has gone forth. The Bible says when your word goes forth, it never comes back void. It should accomplish the purpose for which it has gone out. We may not want to repent in front of others, but I pray that when we go home, go down on your knees and talk to God. If there is any adversity in your heart, if there is any unforgiveness, you may be asking God for something very badly, but you are holding somebody in heart, God will not hear you. Until you make peace with that person, or until you come to the throne of grace and surrender yourself. Father, I ask, oh God, that we will surrender all to you so that you make use of us to your glory and to your honor. We thank you, Lord, this morning. We worship and adore you. We reverence you because there is no other God besides you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. And thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for touching our hearts to do the right things. Father, we bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.